In this video, I'm going to give you a quick tour of a system called Lively for Qt. Uh, Lively for Qt is a JavaScript application and mashup development environment that runs on top of the Qt platform. It basically runs on anywhere where you have Qt available on a Mac, on Linux, on Windows, on various mobile devices. And it can also run inside a web browser if you have a Qt web browser plugin available. The system is based on an earlier system that we built called the Lively Kernel and it has similar capabilities. The key idea is to, is to build a practical web application environment for mobile devices that would also work on other types of computers uh, without us having to write everything from scratch. So it's basically a new implementation of the Lively Kernel in which we have replaced the kernel parts of Lively with functionality offered by Qt. So we get most of the basic functionality, such as the implementation of widgets, things like layout management, core event handling, and, and JavaScript support directly from Qt. But the basic ideas are the same. The, the system is, is fully alive, it's interactive, it's scriptable, uh, it's reflective in the sense that you can actually look inside the system while it's running and make changes. It's sort of in intended to demonstrate how web development could be in the future. So let me start with some of the basics. Uh, I'm, I'm showing here Live for, Q Live for Qt running on a PC. Uh, it's the native version. Uh, you can sort of ignore the rotating object here. It's just showing that the system is alive. There's a timer rotating these guys. Uh, it keeps me honest about performance. So if I move things around, you can see roughly how much uh, computing power I'm using. Uh, anyway, I'll start with some basic, very basic things. So all the objects that you can see here are basically fully interactive and you can manipulate them in various ways. You can, you can grab them, you can move them around, uh, you can resize all the objects, you can rotate them, you support flexible transformations, things like scaling is supported, and there's also support for sharing. And the same the same mechanisms are available for all the objects. So for instance here we have a little bit more complex structures. These are uh, Qt widgets or Q widgets to those who are familiar with Qt. For instance this is a Qdial widget that has been connected to a number of other components. This is a slider here and a scroll bar. And as I said they all follow the same principles. So if I grab this object it can resize itself flexibly or it can rotate uh, a scale itself easily or it also works in, in arbitrary rotation angles and still fully alive and, and the, in this particular case all these objects are basically connected to each other so when I change the values here the promise bar value gets changed and so on and so on anyway so that's, so that's just the, the beginning objects being interactively accessible the next thing is that you can basically uh, compose more complex structures by dragging objects and dropping them on top of each other. So for instance, if I drag this pile of rectangles on top of this guy here, it, it automatically sticks. And now uh, these guys follow the same principles when I manipulate them. So you can build more complex structures uh, this way. And again, these same principles apply not only to these very simplest guys but also to more complex structures like if I if I drop this guy here on the rectangle uh, it, it basically get, uh, gets attached uh, to the rectangle and it's, it's editable okay so the next thing uh, all the objects have various operations attached to them and if I right click or double click an object I basically get a pop-up menu that shows me the basic operations so the first thing you can do is, is copy things, copy complex structures if you wish, or you can remove them. Uh, the next interactive manipulation feature is, uh, is that the style of the object, such as the fill color or border color or opacity, transparency of the object is fully adjustable. So if I click on the fill color, you get the native fill color dialog uh, from the underlying platform. This varies if you're running on Windows or on a Mac or on a mobile device, you get a different type of a dialog. So now I change the color, and likewise, if I 
go and change the transparency to something like 40. Now I have this transparent guy over me, so that, it, so that it's actually transparent. And likewise, there are also many operations for controlling these transformations. So first of all, let me reset all the transformations. So now the rectangle is back to the way it was at the beginning. And then I can basically, I can enlarge or rotate the object also from, from the menu. But anyway, in this case, I'm just going to put it back. So a few other things in the object specific menus, uh, there's another, there's a dialog called interaction properties, which allows me to define whether I actually want each individual object to be editable. So if I turn off all these features, now it basically means that the object, this particular object cannot be moved, can't be copied, can't be resized, rotated, scaled, sheared, and can't be attached to any of the other guys. So again, I could uh, turn them on and off on an individual basis. Furthermore, for each object, well, let me just show that what I just did uh, is true. So now I, I can no longer basically grab this object because it can, cannot, be, cannot be moved. But anyway, the next thing is that uh, there's a tool called Inspector, which allows me to view the internal properties of that particular object. And it, it can show me the implementation of the, the methods, the functions for that object, or, or just show me the variables. I'm going to show the inspector in more detail later when we look at the, the tools. So at this point, I'm just going to close this guy here. And let's move on. So the background of the system, which is known as the world, also has its own pop-up menu and its own behavior attached to it. So if I right-click or double-click the back background of the world, I get a different type of a menu. And most of the items in this menu are, are operations that allow me to create new types of objects. For instance, I can create new simple structures like ellipses. And this is immediately editable. Likewise, uh, there's a menu that contains a number of tools. I'll come back to these in a moment. But since this is a reflective, fully interactive system, there is uh, there are a number of tools such as a class browser and, and an inspector that allow me to view the internal structures and, and make changes to them. There's also a tool called the evaluator which allows me to uh, write uh, JavaScript code on the fly and then make changes to the system without doing any recompilation. And there's also uh, a fully functional source level debugger supporting things like breakpoints, single stepping, and, and call stack viewing, and so on. So let's come back to those in a moment. So now, since we are running on top of Qt, uh, in addition to these simple objects, we can very easily instantiate a number of much more advanced structures. For instance, here is a predefined set of uh, existing Q widgets. These are classes of widgets that are part of the Qt framework. And one of them is uh, uh, for instance, a calendar widget. There's a fully functional calendar in Qt, and I can easily instantiate new copies of that. And all these object, objects, they follow the same principles. So if I want to scale this guy here easily, it uh, allows me to scale things. Uh, let me change the mount to something like August this year. So we can see that this guy is fully, fully functional. And the really neat thing about Qt is that it supports internationalization and, and some, some very complex things out of the box. So for instance, if I go and change the regional settings, you can't actually see this, but I'm changing the regional settings of Windows here. Let's change it to something like Finnish, which you probably can't understand. So now if I choose that, you can see that the calendar was instantly changed to that language. Yeah, and this is something that if you actually want to write something like this from scratch, it takes a huge amount of work if you want to support all the possible languages and, and localization capabilities. So moving on and showing on uh, showing these other types of key widgets, there there are dozens, basically almost hundreds of different types of objects you can you can create. Uh, for instance, there's a line edit component. It's like a full-fledged text editor. Uh, uh, line edit line editor uh, that things like cut copy paste support out of the box make it good at that guy uh, other types of structures uh, you can create buttons very easily and then associate behavior 
with these buttons. And then 